So yeah, I mean, we've, we go back quite far. Mm -hmm. um, the gym, when I first met you, was just an idea across the street and yeah, you've been you were, open just a couple of months. You were looking for a house last time I saw you. Yeah, let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we were shooting our house on this episode and yeah. came and met you guys. And, and then you did, how long have you been open in the tasting room then? At that point, maybe right at a year. Okay. Yeah, somewhere close to that. Yeah. And then it's been awesome to, as we've been growing and like mm -hmm. building a business to see this change and how it's adapted and like that's been great man been cool. i just kind of wave at y'all from across the yeah. street yeah and we've done a lot of stuff together too which has been nice it like has our been. members love coming here so um as, w as we're doing these podcasts and like i'm trying to learn from other business owners mm -hmm. um kind of like i suppose the big question that i have that is one that we've never really talked about is when did you know you had something that was different special that you wanted to make into a business you know like going from i, I know you start off making it at home mm -hmm. when was it like okay we have something here we were probably two years in to yeah. uh to home brewing at that point uh kind of run the spectrum of the beers that could be made we're still being experimental with stuff uh we both had some type of kegerator you know system at home people were you know friends were coming over family coming over to try the beer yeah and you know we're getting a lot of positive feedback uh on that that we we entered a couple of contests and actually took gold in a couple oh, wow. of contests. So at that point, it started kind of really getting real. It's like, okay, yeah. not only are the, our friends and family telling us it's good, you know, which is always yeah. nice, but you right. kind of take it with a grain of salt because yeah. it's like, are you just telling me this just because you're getting free beer <laughs> and, yeah. you, and you like me? Yeah, um, and you're my friend. Or, yeah. or is it that, you know, we're actually making good beer and it's just something that we could kind of, um, you know, make a run at. And, you know, like I said, we entered... Entered a couple of, uh, co of competitions there, some decent ones, you know, decently sized ones, and took home gold, you know, for mm -hmm. a few styles. And from there, it became a little bit more of a serious conversation about this. Uh, we'd both been in our respective fields for about 10 years or so at that point, and we were kind of looking for something else to do anyway. Craft beer was hot. This was, yeah. you know, like 2010-ish, right okay. around that time. Yeah. Um, so we just had a real serious conversation about, hey, is this something we want to pursue and we were both at a kind of a good point in our lives where we were able to do so yeah uh and move forward from there and was would you say this right now what you have was the idea of where you would be now or was it bigger than this was it smaller than this like where what was the goal from that point yeah so the that's a hard thing to kind of quantify down hmm. to where we should be would be want to be kind of thing like we're we're maybe not as big as we had projected to be when yep. we first started, but that came about through the evolution of the brewery itself. You know, when you go into it, you know, next to nothing, you know, you know what you can read in a book, what information you can get from friends, but you've have, you haven't actually run the business before. Neither right. one of us had started a business or run a business, like a full-fledged business. So, at so that when point. you went from like, this is good beer, it's earning, it's mm -hmm. winning awards, other people think it's good, not just our family. Yeah. Then what was the next thing like when you were like, let's make a brewery? What what was the goal there? Was it like we just enjoy this? Let's see where we where it goes. Pretty or much. Or was it like we want a brewery now? With that's a, how it started. No, it yeah. started with let's let's write up a business plan. Let's okay. be serious about what we're doing. Right. Let's see if you know it's even feasible. We'll do some research. Look into to that. We called around to distributors. We you know had a couple of friends in the in the industry. We kind of asked them some questions about you know what the what the numbers, what the facts and figures yeah. looked like. And I mean it was. You know, it was some high level information. Mm -hmm. You know, we got as much as we could out of that, but there was enough for us to move forward with the project. But to start with, the, and the whole spirit behind this thing, the whole spirit behind Eventide is that it was, it was built, you know, for our love of beer yeah. and for friends and family and yeah. to further, you know, our community. Right. You know, that's, that's what we wanted to be. We wanted to be, you know, uh, an integral, integral part of the community and we wanted to further the things that were going on here. Like, and that's, yeah. that's why we worked out so well here and thank God we, we lucked out and kind of stumbled into this location. Yeah. You know, five and a half years ago, there was nothing down here. That's, that's was, what I was going to ask. Like, this was a desolate yeah. location. And, but it was really great for starting a small brewery. Right. You know, we had, a, you had access in and out for any transportation needs. Large trucks can move in and out. We had a huge warehouse space. We had a couple of... Um, smaller spots we could move into but thankfully the landlords were nice enough to let us just rent out the warehouse space to start and then move into the rest of the facility 
Um, it was it was the perfect location. We just didn't know it at the time. At the yeah. time, we were just looking for a location. You were just going to do it anywhere. We were going to do it somewhere. Yeah. You know, we were just trying to find the, the best place to do so. And we were looking somewhere near the Beltline because at that time, the Beltline was just kind of coming about. Okay. Um, and the first place we actually looked at was uh, near where the, I get the East Side Trail is over there, just coming off of like Irwin Street, mm -hmm. that area. Um, the... Uh, Oh, what is it? It was it's near Icebox. Actually, Icebox bought it. It was the Andre Studios. Got you. Yep. Icebox actually so you purchased that, that yeah. so that's what we were looking at to begin with. Cool. But we looked at it, it was a little too big yep. for what we, what we needed, but we love the access to the Beltline. Right. So, you know. So you like, I go here, but we got to be a little bit more patient. Well, and, then, and then this kind of came about because um, a lady that Nathan worked with, her fiance at the time, his company owned this building. But they weren't using it. They had okay. actually moved the, their facility up into Norcross, and they bought a factory, you know, overseas. So they just had an empty facility sitting down here, yeah. and they kind of needed someone to at least steward the facility. Yeah. We were looking for a place to move a brewery into, so it just it just kind of worked out. And it's amazing you talk about the community side of things because, like, I don't know if I would have put a gym there because there was nothing else when I mm -hmm. moved in except this. Yeah. But if it wasn't for you guys opening the tasting room, if you were just brewing beer in the back, mm -hmm. I don't know if I would have even thought of putting a gym there. You know, but knowing there was a brewery here with a tasting room that was, it kind of brought people yeah. into this area. And I was like, all right, well, there's a brewery across the street. The Beltline's there. I'm going to take a chance. Yeah. And it was a big chance, like, and go there. And now to see what's happened is incredible, right? Like, and that's been the hope that, you yeah. know, more and more people are going to come down here. So when we first started, the, the plan was at some point to put in a tasting room, but we didn't have a tasting room down here for the first year and a half we were in existence. Yeah. Uh, so it was just a production facility. And a year and a half in, we finally looked at it. It's like, okay, well, let's get some people down here. And then from there, people started kind of trickle in and trickle in. And then the next thing you know, everything around here starts getting developed. Like yeah. it starts building up and gets bigger and bigger and, it's and funny bigger. funny because you guys, in a way, we're really the catalyst to that, you know, by opening I'm sure a tasting we, room. You know, we're at, you know to some some degree or whatever's going on yeah. down there. And honestly, we're happy to start getting more and more business down this way. You yeah. know, it's been it's been great uh, to be part of like kind of nestled in the back of the community down here. But we love the fact that you guys are across the street. We mm -hmm. love the fact that you know Patria Cucina opened up, Prosecco yeah. opened up, Proper, and these guys over here who are bringing people down. Right. And now they're coming down as a destination because those places are here. Mm -hmm. And they notice that we're here. And the same for us. Exactly. Like the same you know, us for them is that people come down here to Eventide and, and they look over and it's like, oh, hey, there's a place to eat. Let me yeah. pop over there. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And so like, because I mean, for a lot of people, they'll be like, oh, of course, it was obvious to put it here. Why would you not put it here now? <laughs> now. Right? Yeah. Five years but later. So. The reality of that is very different. Yeah. Right? Like, was there a while where you were like, was it the right decision to put it here? Like. Are people gonna come? Like, have you had? Did you have them times when it was? <laughs> Honestly, I, we were all too busy to even think about it. Okay. In the beginning, we couldn't even think. Like, we we were just trying to make the business work day to day. In the beginning, we yeah. weren't even thinking about people. Like, like yeah. I said, I mean, a year and a half before we put a tasting room in, yeah. we we were just like, we were just thinking, okay, let's make the beer, make sure the beer is good, get it into the hands of the people, and then from there, try to continuously build this up. Because I mean, yeah. we bootstrapped everything in there. We didn't have piles of cash that went into this, so right. we were we were you know busy making the beer. You know, packaging everything up, doing yeah. the maintenance around here, doing the build out, like all of these kind of things, the stuff yeah. that we were doing in there. So we weren't really thinking much past. Let's open the facility on the reasons we wanted, the, the principles we found mm -hmm. it on, and try to make a go of this thing, make it a you know the brewery we want it to be. Yeah. And then you know, a year and a half in, we finally were able to kind of you know pick our heads up over you know out of water and just yeah. look around and say, okay, well let's open a tasting room. I think we people would want to come down here and drink beer. Yeah. And, you know, then we did that and thankfully they did. And the, for me, like, it's amazing to see what you've done with, I see people all over the place wearing Eventide shirts and it's like, it's a part of the area. Good. Now, right? Like you see Eventide shirts and, yeah. and now like everywhere I go, the beer is available too. Like, well, that's what we, how what did we're you go on. to that stage? You know what I mean? Like. Um, There's not many places I can go where I don't see even tied on we the menu. Held, or... We held to the beliefs here of being, you know, being part of the community and people, uh, you know, yeah. adopted us from there. Yeah. And that's been the big thing about it. Like, our growth has been word of mouth. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, we didn't have a big marketing budget to put stuff out there. We do a little bit of social media. We'll throw it through, you know, a few shirts on backs around here. Thankfully, they're comfortable shirts that people like and people wearing. people love them, them. yeah. <laughs> and, but, I mean, everything we But I think it been, represents yeah. more than just a beer, right, right now. It's like it's, a part of... It the is growth definitely of this area. a part of Grant Park. Yep. I mean, and that's that's what we were like. When we started this, our, the build out on the tasting room, at the core of it, 
was that we wanted the ideals we set into Eventide to be a part of it, mm -hmm. and we want to be a part of this community, yep. a part of this neighborhood. Yep. We don't we don't want to be this thing that's set off. We want to be, you know, a neighborhood brewery. And how did you stay to, true to that? Like, how did you keep, make sure that you went back to that? Was there? We just held true to who we were. Really, that's what it was. I mean, we we really genuinely genuinely enjoy having people come down here from the community. Yeah. We love it when people from our neighborhood show up. Right. You know, we, we have friends and family around here now. It's yeah. it's a great thing. When you when you like look back, so it's five years you've been open now. Mm -hmm. Is that right? It yeah. we'll have our fifth anniversary in January. In January, and so. like that's a big milestone. Five mm -hmm. years for a business. Yeah. When you um, look back to where you started, and you started with just a couple of beers, and like a lot of people would look that want to start a brewery. I'm sure there's tons of people that want to start a brewery and they're brewing beer at home and mm -hmm. they think, and they'd want to get to this point now where you have multiple beers, you're in different locations, you're in most bars in mm -hmm. Atlanta, like you can find your beer everywhere. It's become a household name, right? How do you start that process? Is it you just start with one beer? Like it's, cause I mean, a lot of people be like, no, I want this, tell me how I get to this. Mm -hmm. You know, like what's the secret, you know, like, and. Well, it depends on what you want your business model to be. Are mm -hmm. you just trying to grow something very, very quickly and sell it off? Yeah. You just want to have a bunch of different styles. Do you only want to serve directly out of your tap room? Do you want to grow this to be a thing that's you know part of you moving forward and you plan to hand it on to your kids? Figure out what you want the business to be first. Mm -hmm. And then from there, start working on everything else around it. You know, Educate yourself on what the rules and regs are for whatever that particular business is. Price out you know, whatever equipment you think you're going to need, get an idea of who you want to be. What is your brand? Yeah. You know, what do you, when, when people think of your name, whatever your what business name, for? Yeah. what do they think of? Yeah. What, what, are the, you know, what is synonymous with that? What are they, you know, what is it, what emotion does it evoke when that mm -hmm. happens? Um, and, and obviously, you know, have some beer. If, if you want to do beer, you know, yeah. start brewing some beer, start doing some stuff at home, figure out, you know, kind of what you like. And, but that's going to, that's going to actually, be a part, you know, coalesce into your full business model. Because yeah. whatever beers you're wanting to make, that's going to, you know, it, it's going to shape what the overall business dynamic is going to be. So figure all of that stuff out first, as best you can. Obviously, right. once you start this thing, you're going to find out, you know, next to nothing, yeah. you know. But educate yourself as best you can going into it. Figure out who you want to be and hold to those ideals. Hold true to whatever it is that you're doing moving forward because that's the thing you're passionate about. And right. you're going to need that moving forward. Yeah. And so five years in, I come over here today and you guys are back in the office working just as hard as when I first met you. Right. And like pushing to the next level and mm -hmm. the next thing. How, what, when do you think you're going to be at a level where you want to be? Or is there a goal for like your, your growth? How does that look for you now over the next like five years as you come Maybe. up to this five year mark? We kind of measure one day at a time, but we also have you know, higher level plans of mm -hmm. what we want to do here. So you have to, the thing is you can't get away from the day-to-day -day stuff because you still have to make sure that the brewery is operating the way that you set it up to operate. Okay. You know, you still want to make sure the customer interaction is exactly the same as when you walked away from it because you had to, you know, build out the next phase of the brewery and you had to spend six months somewhere else doing yep. something else. Like you, you want to make sure that you're leaving in capable hands and this kind of stuff happens. So you never really want to like and how take would, your, how do you your do fingers that? off the pulse just of by that. Being just, by, just by being present, yep. you know, being a part of the day-to-day -day stuff. The, the thing is, the bigger you get, the less you're able to control all the components. So you have to put good people in charge of the things that you can no longer control. Yeah. And from there how do you guys find good people do you worry about what they know about beer do you worry about what they or is it just what do you just make sure they fit into your value system or like what is man, that that's hard to answer man yeah. it's like it's, it's you know it's yeah you want to have all the information there you want to make sure that they're confident in what they're doing you know sometimes it's just a feeling you have about people you know yeah. like it's how do they fit into the overall dynamic of what your business is you know and what have you have you noticed certain people that you've invested in have taken the business forward and then anybody like this is not going to work have you had to go different ways to it like, happens yeah it happens in every business yes yep. absolutely yeah you know you you, you always want to hope that everybody's along for the ride as long as possible and also i want to know that people can evolve past this you yep. know like i don't necessarily have to have a person here forever if they get if they get to the point where they think they've kind of maxed out what they can do here and they want to go off and do great things I wish them the best of luck. I want them to do that. Yeah. You know, I want them to go open their own business right. and go through this stuff. And I want to be a resource, 
you know, that they can have here. I want Nathan to be a resource they can have here. I want everybody around here, you know, they can touch back to yeah. us and say, hey, man, I'm, I've run into this brick wall. What do I do around here? It's like, oh, I can help you with this. Right. You know, because yeah. we've done it before. But that's, that's what I want for all of my employees. I want them to so all you, better So you've themselves. gone from you would literally making the BA day today kind of thing yes. to becoming a leader in this place where you're it's not a necessity yeah. i mean you have to do that you have yeah. to take yourself out of the how have you room. handle that transition then because like that's a big because you started wanting to make beer right yeah. that was it that and was i still want to make beer yeah that's the thing about it like i'm still in this to make beer that's yeah. what that's what got me into this to begin with was wanting to make beer was wanting to but if i came back here this. five years if 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 i came back here in five years time and you were still in the same position you're in now mm -hmm. Oh, back then, that would mean that the business probably hasn't progressed, right? Probably, because, yes. Because a lot of people get stuck in that, right? This, and this is what I'm saying. Is yeah. like, as, as, you get, as you grow, as you mm -hmm. mature, you, you have to start stepping away from the things you love sometimes. Yep. You know, because you can't, again, you can't put your hands on everything as you get bigger. And so what would you say your role is now? How is that adapted? And like, what, what do you feel... Do you still love it as much or is it like, yeah, I've had to go to this role? No, no, no. It's well, it was necessary. Yeah. You know, it, every, every evolution we have here is a necessary evolution for the business. Mm -hmm. um, it's there are days I love it and days I don't as much because again, again it takes me away from the thing that I, I like doing the most, but also I enjoy the challenge of this new position, this new role. And I say role roles, you roles, know, because yeah. at a, at, yeah. in, a, in a small business, you're never just one one piece, one component. Yeah. You know, you're always having to wear a bunch of different hats, you yeah. know. So, uh, but it's it's good because every time I do own something new, I have to learn something new. And I enjoy learning new things. You know, it, it helps um, round me out as a person and it helps me move to the next to the next step. Mm -hmm. You know, it helps me gather information to move to the next step for me personally and for the business. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's what everybody here does. And that's a good thing about this place is that everybody here is like mine that they're all they're all wanting to work you know his or her way up what are the things that you say would say are your strengths that you do and the things that kind of you don't like and you don't want to do have you been able to pass them off to other people or yeah. I mean, for me progressing at the gym was i was coaching every class mm -hmm. right and then eventually it was like if you want this business to grow you have to get out of the coaching role and you have to go and do this next growth role mm -hmm. sales and like making sure the coach is being and training the coaches and all yeah. that stuff. And then now it was like, okay, now you have to put someone in that place and do the overall vision of the gym. Do mm -hmm. you want to expand to another location? Do you want to? And it was like, I went from every day active to sitting at the computer most of the time, mm -hmm. figuring things out on the computer. And it was like, I didn't open a gym to sit behind a computer. You know no. what I mean? And it's like, <laughs> I didn't open a room to do the same thing. Exactly. So, yeah. so what has been, what's a, been the challenge like for you? Has that been the biggest challenge for you? Is like I think that's been the biggest active one. active every day to doing the thing you want yeah. the most to now having to sit like a lot of your time being in, on, on the phone, on your computer, yeah. planning with other people, and taking I think, meetings. I think that's why I like to do this kind of stuff. Yeah. Is like go and meet other people and get out and see what they're yeah. doing and see what they're doing for their business. And then like it's maybe different. have somebody else yeah and my goal is to eventually be able to go and do this stuff and have someone else implement the systems mm -hmm. right i always want to because right like with the workspace i've got um i'm doing the overall vision mm -hmm. and then i've hired someone who is amazing at systems to okay. start implementing all the systems and like make them work i know i want when someone emails mm -hmm. it to send them an email back and text them and yeah. i know what i want it to do yeah but i don't want to do it no I just once you, you want to be able mean? to delegate it off to somebody else like, and look, that's the same thing in the gym is like i want to be able to go over to the gym and go and meet with the coaches sure. see how everything's going but i don't want to look at the accounting yeah and like i want the numbers to be given to me by yeah. my wife or whoever's they're, doing they're the done account. i just give them to me when it's right. finished and i'll take a quick how look does, over it. how would you say if you could look in a few years like your perfect day at eventide what would that look like do you think Oh man, I, I think I'm still trying to figure that one out. Yeah. Um, the thing is, right now, it's I'm still learning a lot of new new roles and new processes here. And as yeah. as the business expands, I learn something new every day doing that. So, so you kind of have to be in the trenches exactly, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I don't know still. exactly what my process, my, my my perfect day is going to be until I get a little bit further in here. Because I mean, every single day, like I'm just, I'm in the same boat there now. Instead of being back there doing that kind of work, I'm doing the you know the inventory forecasting. I'm yeah. making sure that we're moving in the right direction. I'm you know, taking meetings with our distributor. I'm, I'm trying to supplement sales in the market. Yep. So like, I'm still very heavily involved in day-to-day -day stuff. It's just moved from one portion to the other by necessity. 
Um, yeah. So I, right now, I don't really know what my perfect day is. Um, I'd love to get to a point where I still like doing some of that stuff, but yeah, do I do I want to run numbers every single day to mm. make sure that we're on track to do the stuff that we're doing? Do I want to have to go make deliveries and pick up supplies because I'm the only person with a CDL that can drive our truck? Like, exactly. Do I want to no, do that? No, not I absolutely don't yeah. want to do that. So yeah, moving those things off my plate is a thing I want to do, but I do like furthering the business. Yep. I do enjoy That's what I that. Enjoy. Yep. And I really like when I'm able to have discussions with people at high levels that help move this thing forward. Right. You know, and then be able to disseminate that information out to the rest of the staff so they also can enact the vision. So we yeah. all are moving in the same direction. One thing I've been looking at is like, what is the most important role in a business? You know, mm-hmm. is like, what, what's the number one position to put you in Eventide mm-hmm. for it to move forward? You know, and then like anything else, like you go on and drive and because you've got the CDL license, yeah. it's taking you away from the role mm-hmm. that would be pushing it forward. Sure. Right? And it's like, do you want to put yourself in that position? And for me, for example, at the gym, mm. I'm in that position now to push the business forward, yeah. which is like mentoring the coaches, mentoring the other people, making sure they're doing what they need to do to drive it forward. And I'm looking at what's next, where are we going next? Yeah. What can I put in on the back end? So like, what challenges can we mm. have? Can I set the schedule throughout the year so everyone knows yeah. what's coming up? And it's like, I'm overseeing all that. And, that's, and then I don't have to go and coach or clean yeah. the gym or, you know what I mean? Like, if I was still cleaning the gym, that's like a $10, $15 an hour job. Yeah. I'm taking myself away from But you're the taking the time away from the job. Yeah, exactly. Right. You're taking time away from what you could be doing to help further yeah. the business. Like, yeah, it's beneficial. Cleaning the gym is beneficial exactly. and it's necessary. Exactly. But is it the best use of your time? Yeah. You know, Especially when like, you're at this point, five years yeah. in. That's it's the like, thing that we run into every day. I mean, like, again, Nathan and I, we run this business together. We both do different things in here, but we both are in kind of the same boat. We, we're bogged down a lot of times by the day-to-day stuff because you have to be still, but we've alleviated more of our time Good. to start yeah. looking forward. Well, the problem is, and I think it's most business owners do this, is you start it and you're a doer. Yeah, right. well, that's so why you like, start a thing. If you see something, <laughs> yeah. you just do it, and you're like, I shouldn't be doing this right yeah. now because I, I should be doing this. And that's one of the toughest things to get out of, that habit of just doing, of yep. seeing and doing is one of the toughest things to get away from because just because it's there, doesn't mean you should jump on doing it. Like yeah. there should be someone else in that position. If if what that thing is that you're doing isn't wholly critical to moving the business forward, mm-hmm. you know, like if I went out there and some of the equipment was down and I couldn't make beer or yep. my staff couldn't make beer, yep. that's critical. That's something I need to jump on right. immediately. Yeah. You know, if I walk back there and there's some grain on the floor that needs yeah. to be swept up. Probably not. Right. You know? But being you, it's your place. You're going to start sweeping it up. You know, or, like, or whatever's going on there. Like yeah. if, you know, you walk into the cooler and, the th- and things are out of sorts. For example, like, like you walk in here it. and there's a massive line and you're like, oh, I could jump behind there and start 7B. You're like, no, Jeffrey. We need you back there. Well, there's that. You know and I mean? also, like, yeah. am I doing more benefit than harm by jumping back there? Because I'm not, you know, exactly. to the flow of what's happening behind the bar. Am I just going to do more damage yeah. by throwing another body into the mix? And, and that's li- the thing you have to think of, yeah. too. I know? was listening to something the other day where someone was calling it, if you're not, say you're not around very much, yeah. and it's called seagull management, yep. because you just come in and shit on everybody and then and leave. And then fly away. Yeah, and yeah. then they're like, well, he doesn't know what's going on in here. Yeah, and like, exactly. That's the one thing I have to be careful of now, because I'm not in the gym as much. Mm-hmm. I can't go in there and just be like, why is this dirty? Why is that going on? It's just like, you have I'm going to let, let them you have handle to let it. The people they know the what yeah. they have to do. If I come in here tomorrow and it's still and it's the same, but then, then I have to a have problem. a conversation. And with I haven't created the right system. Yep. They don't know. So then it's on me. So that's why that's why we have meetings. How do you handle <laughs> how do you handle that? Because I think a lot of people don't know that like when they start a business without hiring people, whatever happens, whatever goes wrong, mm. no matter who did it, it's your fault. Oh yeah. It's it's a reflection of the business and you know yeah. the business are gonna be the people that are in charge of running the business. Yeah. So um, yeah, everything here that anyone does out there is a reflection of Eventide and as a result is a reflection of the people who run Eventide. Yeah. Um, in five years in business, what do you think, do you think you're a different person? Do you think you've, you've learned so, yeah, because yeah. in two years for me it's been like 10 year yeah, education. It's, no, it's, it's huge. You never, you never learn better than by doing. That's, yeah. That is the best, a crash course. If is someone's going to open a business now, what do you think the number one thing you, that you would say to start with is 
Um, kind of what I, you know, I was saying about that before is have the best idea of who you are and what business you want to run. Know what you stand for. Yeah. And then educate yourself on every facet of your business. Mm-hmm. Because that's the stuff that's going to bog you down. Yeah. You know, so do those things. Nice. If, you, if you do those things and you feel that you're pretty well on top of those, I see you stand a very good chance of being successful. Love it. Yeah. Where's even Ty going to be in another five years then? Another five years, I plan on being here. Uh, mm-hmm. This location being a little bit bigger, um, yeah. and then possibly expansion outside the state, maybe even uh, you know another facility elsewhere. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not just happy being a brewery here. You want to make sure that you you want to yeah. expand into other. Yeah. Ultimately, I, if it all boiled down to just being here and doing as much in the, on this location as possible, mm-hmm. I think I could be happy doing that. Yep. But if there's an opportunity to expand, I want to be able to capitalize on the opportunity to expand. Cool. You know, and I think there are other places that would benefit from having, even if it's just an even tied tap room, like a very, very small tap room with a very small system in the back, something like that. I think yeah. there are places that would benefit from that. And also, I mean, we're in the state of Georgia right now. Yeah. I would like to kind of try my hand at, at being outside the state, and I'd like to see how Eventide could, uh, could fare like elsewhere. Yeah. So we'll see. Nice. Yeah. I mean, my biggest thing is I, I'd love to know in a couple of weeks or months, like, what your perfect day is to make sure that you're aiming towards it and not yeah. just five years' time I come back and you're like, I'm still doing driving the, the HGV. The same thing. Or, yeah, yeah. No, just no, no. make sure that you're. And you know, I hope that I can tell you that. Yeah. I hope that I have that answer for you. Do you, think, do you feel like you're living it now? Or do you feel like, I feel like it's I'm a little bit closer. too much day to day? No, yeah. I feel like I'm getting closer. That's cool. You know, I do. Yeah. It is a lot of day to day, and there's still a lot that's kind of in here, and that's any small business, but yeah. I feel every day, you know, I get a little bit closer. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. You're yeah. welcome.